Today we're going to talk about why proof by induction works. Now I hope that you're quite familiar, quite comfortable with proving things by induction now. That's a kind of technique, but there's actually a principle at work here. Why does proof by induction work? The reason it works is that we're doing it over the natural numbers, and the natural numbers are very special. And actually, the fact that induction works is a property of the natural numbers, and it's called the principle of induction. For the natural numbers. Now, you might think at the moment that the fact that proof by induction works doesn't feel like a property of the natural numbers. But in a minute, we'll, I'll show you that it's equivalent to something else called the well-ordering uh, axiom, which really does feel like a property of the natural numbers. So here's the principle of induction. The idea is that we're trying to prove some statement about natural numbers, and I'll call that statement P. So we're trying to prove a statement P about the natural number n. So n is a natural number. And so the idea is this. First of all, we have to check the case for n equals 1, right? So suppose two things are true. One, P1 is true. So that's the base case that we always have to check. And then also, suppose that for all k greater than or equal to 1, now we have to get the induction step, right? For all k greater than or equal to 1, k being true implies that it's true for k plus 1. So this is the induction step. says if you've done it for k, then you can do it for k plus 1. So the conclusion of this, then pk is true, maybe I should say n, pn is true for all natural numbers n. That is the principle of induction. And that's what you use when you're proving something by induction. Now, in fact, there's also a principle of strong induction, um, principle of strong induction. The principle of strong induction doesn't just tell you that pk plus 1 follows from k. It tells you that if you know that your property is true for every natural number up to k, then you can deduce it for pk plus 1. So 1 is still P1 is true, a strong induction, but for 2, we have to have P1, P2, P3, and so on, all the way up to PK being true. That implies PK plus 1. So if this is true, then Pn is true for all n in the natural numbers. So, in fact, these two, these two are equivalent because, of course, if you've got, if you've got this case, then you deduce that p n is true for all n up to n. Um, in which case, if you can deduce, if you can deduce right, if you can deduce this from p of k, you can certainly deduce it from all the p ones up to p k's, right? Now, supposing you can only deduce it from all the P1s up to PKs, would that mean that you could, you could deduce it from just PK? Well, you couldn't, but if you also had P1 being true, then you'd get P2 being true, and you'd get P3 being true, and you'd get P4 being true, and so on, all the way up to PK. So the point, the point is that in practice, when you're using strong induction, it's going to be for cases where you actually do have to use the fact that it was true for lots of examples all the way up to k, and not just that it was true for k plus 1. So now what we'll do is we'll see why this is a property of the natural numbers. So I'm going to show you that this is equivalent to the well-ordering property. Um, 
So the world, let's see, I guess I should run all this off. that the natural numbers are well ordered, which is to say that any non-empty set of natural numbers has a least element. Okay, so you might think, well, how could anything possibly not have a least element? But if you think about um, when you're telling the time, the, the hands on the clock, I've got to do this the other way around, have The hands on the clock go round and round and round, or perhaps on your screen, they go round and round and round that way. Now I'm getting confused. Anyway, the hands on the clock go round and round and round, so there's no least time, right? There's a least time on any particular day, but there's always something that's earlier, because when you get to one o'clock, in the natural numbers, there's nothing smaller than one, but in time, there is something earlier than one o'clock, which is midnight. So the hours aren't well ordered, and we'll see, at some point later, we'll see that that's because we're doing modular arithmetic, not ordinary arithmetic. But anyway, the well-ordering principle says that any non-empty set of natural numbers has a least element. And I hope you agree that this is much more like a property of numbers. The principle of induction doesn't feel like a property, but actually this one feels very much like a property. So what we'll do next is we'll show that those are equivalent.